your non-stop radio station. While the others are talking, we're already playing the music. This is the radio station with more ears than listeners. Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't give the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happen. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic, nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal. Man, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? It's Friday night. You're all losers just like me, man, because we're sitting here listening to my big mouth. Uh, why, you should be out there riding, having a good time. I'm kind of upset, though, right now, man. I really am. Monday and Tuesday, they said that we might be getting some wet snow. There's always that one time every year that Jack Frost has to show his pecker and say, hey, I'm still in charge. But yeah, that's Monday or Tuesday night, one of those two. That kind of sucks. Uh, we do have available right now signed copies of Brotherhood and Betrayal, but they are running very, very, very thin right now. So if you guys want one, go ahead and click in uh, Discord and stuff and... Get your copy of Brotherhood and Betrayal. You get yourself a nice signed kiss by China Dow. And, you know, I know that's what you guys are looking for. Me, you know, you don't care about me. You know, you guys put that all the time. Uh, but anyway, man, I wanted to discuss some stuff today. Uh, send us off with a good Friday night. Uh, what's going on in the scene. As well as some laughs, man. When I seen this freaking one article about... How you can live the biker lifestyle. I almost peed myself, okay? I almost pulled a China Dow when I seen this. Now, it's not even from Mr. Wizard or any of them, guys. This is actually from a different magazine. It's uh, the Trip Machine Company. But these are tips that they're going to give you 10 signs of how to be a biker. Yes, we're going to be going through that good stuff as well. Uh, but let's get some biker news. And I haven't done any biker news lately. So I need to get on my game. I have been uh, dedicating everything to some of these past cases and stuff. So let's get you caught up in all that. As usual, over in uh, not Canada. I was going to say Canada. They're like this too. Uh, but in Australia, they acting a fool over in Australia again, man. Uh, there's Molotov cocktail, uh, fire bombings happening, drive-by shootings. It's like it was here in the 60s and 70s, man. What can I say? Uh, they're just a little behind the times with us. You know, nobody gave them the memo that maybe you don't want to be doing this in public because it pisses off citizens. Next thing you know, they're back in the cops. Yeah, you don't want to do this kind of business, man. You don't want to do it in the open. Because it's just going to bring all these strike force this and strike force that. It's going to be a headache for all you guys involved. Uh, I guess the uh, Mongols and the HUD or Headhunters are not getting along these days. Uh, that's evident with uh, the Molotov uh, fire bombings and the shootings. Uh, sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs, I must say. Uh, but that's the biggest news going over there. And it's funny, people do ask me a lot about the difference between Oz, I call it Oz, and uh, the United States. All I can tell you is what you see too. That's all I can tell you. I am from the United States. I know I see all these messed up stories, but with anything with the media, you never ever know... If it's true or not, only those that are in Australia can tell you if it is or not. I do know that Australia, they got something up their butts, man. They really do. They got something right up them asses because they're tight up there. You know, you know that old saying with the diamond up the ass deal, right? That's cops over in Australia. 
Always busybodies, man. Especially that Strike Force Raptor, man. Strike Force Raptor. They always have to give it cool names and stuff. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but let's take a look at this, man. Uh, Stuff.com, uh, uh, Auckland Gang War, Molotov uh, Cocktail Firebombing linked to Mongols Headhunter Shootings. George Block has already put this out there. Let's see if it's you to hear it. Nah, of course you can't. Uh, anyway... Uh, gang members firebombed an Uckland business linked to an outlaw motorcycle club before a spat of shootings in the city. Stuff has learned. You think they get a little more, you know, a little more creative with the name of their newspaper? Who wants to read Stuff? <laughs> I guess they're trying for a marketing angle with this, but it just ain't working for me. Uh, the arson attack uh, happened on Easter weekend about a week before the Headhunters gang pad was sprayed with bullets. Yeah, bikers are doing drive-by shootings out there now. It don't sound right to me, man. Plus, of course, there's the gang members coming in. And a lot of uh, clubs uh, I know here in the States are doing some of that stuff, man. Bringing in uh, the bangers in. And they live that life, uh, they live it to the fullest, and next thing you know, there's the hostility and the violence, it ratchets it up a lot more than if it would have just been old school, old timers doing stuff. You know, if somebody get, you get mad at somebody, just go firebomb them, screw it, man. All that drive-by shooting stuff's too much of a headache. But there's more and more of that, man. Unfortunately, there is. So uh, Now, the arson attack happened on Easter weekend, about a week before the Headhunters gang pad. Okay, we got that. Uh, that preceded a shooting in broad daylight at a downtown Auckland hotel in the discovery of uh, explosives at a home in the North Shore. It sounds like it's really heating up there. But that's going to probably piss off these cops pretty bad. Uh, targeting a hotel, guys. It really is. Uh, they're just not going to deal with that kind of crap. Uh, in the early hours, uh, two cars rolled past Northside Power Sports in an industrial part of Silverdale's Forge Road. Uh, inside were members of the Headhunters gang whose new pad is just around the corner in Magna Road Warehouse. Molotov cocktails were repeatedly lobbed at the mechanic's business, setting the car on fire in front of the premises and singing uh, the outside of the, uh, singeing the outside of the building. You know what? I always worried about Molotov cocktails, man. If you don't do it right, you're going to go up in a blaze of glory. I can tell you like that, man. It's going to set you all on fire and shit. Not good business, man. Not good business. It's going to suck, actually. Uh, it will, uh, you know what, you'd be like thinking you're like in the 15th century or something, Jonah Ark or whatever it is, goes up in flames. That's what you're going to do if you don't do that damn Molotov uh, right. Uh, they say the business did not catch fire, but a broken window, blackened, claddened, and charred husk of a car were outside. Uh, if you're on the radio station and you guys can't do this right now because uh, I'm actually recording this for uh, tomorrow morning, uh, you can see that. Uh, the business has been purchased a few weeks earlier by a man in his mid-20s with links to the Mongols Motorcycle Club. Uh, they, you, know, you know how they're going to have to play this in the media, man. A notorious international bike gang embroiled in an escalating feud with the headhunters in Auckland, man. Ugh. War, 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 man. You guys crazy over there, man. That's just like what? You found like 80 hand grenades up in Canada? It's like, okay, we do our stuff here in the States, but damn, you guys like our psychos, man. You take it to a whole, a whole different freaking level. You're crazy. Uh, anyway... Uh, police are currently looking at whether there is any link between this incident and recent tensions involving organized crime groups. Yeah, I, it looks like there's tensions, man. People throwing freaking bombs at each other, man. Uh, about a year ago, the headhunters moved into a warehouse in Magna Road, a two-minute drive away from the Northside Power Sports, 
their he old headquarters at Marana is legally retained. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, people working nearby said the gangsters are good, respectful neighbors and keep to themselves until the bombing. Uh, many appear older in their 40s and 50s. You know what? You guys really suck, man. Here I'm thinking uh, 40s are like the new 30s or something. But I don't see it that way anymore. You guys are making, you know what? I'm going to be 48 years old. You're making me feel like I'm freaking an old freaking geezer or something. Uh, you know, is that the way you guys get when you're like 48? I and mean, I'm asking people that are older than me and stuff like that. Uh, it, it sucks. It sucks, man. My body's aching and stuff. I got to get back to working out. The freaking COVID screwed up my workout schedule. And then the damn, uh, you know, heavy lifting stuff I was doing screwed up every part of my body man i do feel old man you know what i wish i can go to a, i was like 20 years old again or something like that uh yeah i would have listened to the old timers back then about not to abuse your body because once you get my age you really do feel it trust me guys maybe that's why everybody in my age bracket and older they start dying of heart attacks and stuff around these clubs because you gotta Learn to sit back and chill. Because if you don't, my God, you're going to be feeling it. Uh, then on uh, Wednesday morning, two gangs were involved in a shooting in the lobby of a five-star hotel in Auckland. Oh, my goodness gracious. You guys... In Auckland, yeah, Grinch, it might, oh shit, man, they're going to get pissed at me. I'm saying Oz, and it's probably New Zealand, <laughs> is what it is. Sorry, guys. Hey, man, don't you guys share common languages like you say mate or something like that? Yeah, I know people are going to get pissed at me about that one now. Uh, anyway, shooting uh, in the lobby of a five-star hotel isn't the best thing. Of ideals, if you ask me. That right there is going to bring some attention. You're going to have stuff, newspaper, out there talking about you. You're going to have the Herald talking about you. Everybody and their mother is going to be talking about you. Because it seems like in New Zealand and Australia, this is like a soap opera to them. I'm telling you, they even report on all these people's social media accounts. Can you believe that? They do. They'll report on Instagrams and all that kind of crap. <laughs> it's funny. But I got to admit, man, uh, Australia and New Zealand, you guys have some beautiful women, man. It's like you don't even have to pay to make them look like Barbie. They already come out that way. Can you please tell us what you're doing over there to produce them hot-ass women and tell some of our female species over here in the United States how to pop them out? That, they're hot. Oh, my goodness. Uh, anyway, the incident showed the reason police have launched. Here we go. Operation Tawiro. You know what? This is bullshit. You know, I don't have enough problems with the English language, okay? I have enough problems trying to keep a Chicago accent under. You know, it was funny, Donna. She was my uh, editor on the book, uh, Brotherhood and Betrayal. And she said, you know what? I can actually see the Chicago accent in your writing. I was like, man, that's bullshit. So here I am, I'm trying to keep it under wraps, and you guys throw this crap at me, man. This French stuff, and Tom, where, what is that, Indonesian or something? What the hell, man? Can't you guys just say something in English? You guys are English over there, right? You know, I know you guys have to say it all proper and stuff, but Jesus Christ, give me a break, man. You guys are killing me with these damn words. Uh, anyway... Now that I'm bitching about the other language, uh, three men uh, did, uh, you know, flee the scene. They fled it. Officers swarmed the building. No one was injured, and officers took three people into custody. Uh, after the shooting, witnesses saw police escort a man dressed in red, the traditional color of the headhunters, from the swanky motel. Interesting, man. Interesting. Uh, anyway... 
they go on to say it would not have been as successful if police hadn't had such a focus. Oh, okay. Uh, the Mongols Motorcycle Club originated in California, but it has a presence in several other countries, including Australia. Now, see, guys, it says Australia here. I don't know where the hell Auckland is. Do I look like I know where Auckland is? You know what? I didn't even know where Chicago was unless I seen the Sears Tower. But you guys want me to remember if Auckland's in freaking New Zealand or something. It says right here. Australia. Which, t if, if this is wrong, blame stuff.com or stuff.co.nz. Blame them. Do not blame me. How are my people in Discord doing, man? Hopefully you guys are having a good Friday and all that good stuff. Hey, I see China Dow is in there. Man, oh man, China Dow. I, you know what? I got to talk about China Dow for a minute. She pissing me off, people. You got to help me out here. She pissing me off. Uh, today, she has been one of the crabbiest people I have ever known. Here, I'm thinking, okay, she's going to be all happy. She played it on the show this morning. Everything's going good. Next thing you know, she being a bitch, baby. I said, like, what the hell is wrong with your bipolar ass? Well, I'm tired. Okay, and go take a nap. Well, you got me doing this and you got me doing that. Well, I told you before the show that we were going to do this after the show. Well, I'm tired. I, you know, and then she does this mumbling shit under her breath. Have you guys ever had to go through that? Where a woman, they'll stomp away from you. They'll stomp. And they'll go under their breath against you. It's like, and I'm sitting here, I'm like Eddie Murphy, man. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? What did I do now? My goodness gracious, not a good state of affairs today with China Dell. She is a freaking crap ass if you ask me today. Bad, bad, bad. And you know what? I got to deal with her when I get back tonight. What the hell's wrong with that? You know, I hate it with sometimes with bipolar people. You always got to wonder what kind of mood they're in. Isn't there like something I can buy, like a light switch or something, where if they start talking stupid, I can turn her mouth off or, you know. Uh, you know, it's one of those deals where you want to just like tie them up and throw them in a river. Uh, allegedly, you know, I didn't say that on air. It's allegedly. Uh, sometimes I have them thoughts. Sometimes I do, man. I have them freaking thoughts. Uh, but anyway, okay, let's keep on going before, you know what, I just talk about her all damn day. She got me pissed. Got my pecker all hurt and shit. Uh, Auckland Hotel shooting, and we were just talking about that, was linked between the, those two. I don't think I need to go over it, man. I think the article says enough over there about this. Uh, so, uh, let's go and, uh, up to Canada, you crazy Canadians, man. Hopefully, uh, Donna's friends and the boy, he had uh, a good surgery. Hopefully, he's doing good, doing better. Uh, we're thinking about him, our thoughts. Hopefully, the old man upstairs taking care of him. Uh, anyway, out of Sherbrooke, uh, record.com. See, at least they got a better freaking deal. I think it's better, don't you guys? I think it's a better name in the newspaper. Uh, I guess they're rejecting an offer on the sale of a former... I love how they say this. Hell's Angels Bunker. Yes, they're rejecting it. Uh, the city council turned down an offer of sale from uh, Quebec. That's it. Them freaking Quebecs, man. Them Quebecians or whatever you call it. They always talk in French. And they always put that crap in the newspaper. I'm telling you, there is a conspiracy theory against me to make me look like an asshole. Because you guys always have to speak French. Okay, this is North America. France is overseas, okay? Did you take a wrong turn or something? You had to speak French? You know, that's just like in New Orleans. Some of them speak French. Get out of here. Go speak English. We won the war. Get out of here. With that French shit. Anyway, uh, the old Hells Angels bunker on Wellington Street uh, South during its Monday night meeting, although the city has publicly expressed interest in seeing the buildings tore down, 
The proposed uh, 538000 price tag. Are you guys freaking crazy? Is that really how much it costs up there? What are you guys, just because you're French up there, you think you got to be all fancy and stuff? You know, I remember seeing John Adams. I love that miniseries on HBO. When he goes over with uh, Benjamin Franklin, dude, Benjamin Bra Franklin was a playboy, man. He got a lot of French freaking uh, junta. He did. Anyway, they all dressed up, put on makeup. Even the guys were wearing makeup. Maybe that's why the French lose wars all the time. The guys are too busy wearing makeup over there. Anyway, they always want the best. You know, $538,000 for this thing? Are you shitting me? This would only cost maybe 200000 here in the States. You guys are freaking ripping people off up there. Uh, the price tag was deemed excessive given that the estimated cost of demolition is another 100 g on top of that. You think that's a little excessive? I agree. Uh, the property has been in possession of the provincial government under the oversight of DPCP. It was, oh, here you go. Here you go, you cocksuckers. Operation Shark Kick? Can't you guys just say shark? No, you got to spell it S-H-A, capital Q, lowercase c. Now, us dumb freaking Americans, especially Chicago boys, look at this and it's like, you know what, I'm dyslexic. I can't read this. You don't have to be that way. You don't have to be mad at us because you have lost a couple wars. You know, actually, you should be nicer to us because, you know, the American and British shaved your ass. And the Canadians, by the way, saved your ass on Normandy. They got in their France. What's wrong with you people? Talking all that nonsense and stuff like that. Crazy people, man. Crazy. Anyway, ah. Uh. I'm just in one of the moods today, and I think I have something against the French, you think? <laughs> oh, we're going to go to our first song break. We're going to be playing Ebba Essence and Firehouse, and I actually picked this one Firehouse song for China Dow because she's got me pissed off. I'm thinking, don't treat me bad. You don't have to treat me bad. You don't have to be a psycho bipolar woman. Just sit down. Take a chill pill. And if, I, if you come home and say that I was off my meds to give that excuse, I'm going to kick you right in the poontang, and you better hope I'm able to get my foot out of there. Not in your ass, but in your poontang, I'm going to put this food in. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Anyway, let's go to Ebenson's first. Okay, did you get the point, China Dow? Don't treat Hollywood bad, damn it. Anyway, I have to go over into the Discord chat right now. Rubik's, really? Okay, you just, you love the punishment that comes from Hollywood, don't you? You go, and you know what? Not only do you wear a dress, okay? You let your balls hang out with no underwears. You just requested that I play Journey? You're kidding me, right? You just did not say that to me. Journey? <laughs> Nuts! You're crazy! Oh my goodness gracious. You know what? I gotta love all my listeners. I really do. Uh, thanks for listening to WMMRDB Rockford. Man, you're listening to freaking Rockin' with Hollywood right now. Doing some uh, biker news. Uh, Geo, now that's what I'm talking about. House of the Sun right there. Uh, doors, uh, rainbows too. Huh. Uh, rainbows. <laughs> hey, but you gotta at least admit that, you know, he's got some uh, gonads, man. He goes around, wears that dress, and, you know, takes his hits. Hey, that's a good freaking guy. Uh, I guess he's working on his bike right now and stuff like that. So, hey, hopefully you uh, can hook up with J-Man and uh, take a swirl together with everybody. Uh, but be careful, man. Be careful out there. We've been hearing a lot of freaking guys getting in some accidents lately. And I don't know. It always happens when it gets warm out where people are crazy, man. And it's not the bikers or it's not the motorcycle enthusiasts that are being idiots. I actually say that we ride and we are more coherent. We are more aware of our surroundings than cagers are. Uh, they don't. They're dumb. 
Cagers are just dumb. You know, I didn't see him. You didn't see him my ass, man. How hard is it to see him? You know, but we've been having a lot of those uh, lately, and you guys just be careful out there. Now, let's. Uh, I'm going to go into this next one. Everybody knows how I talk about the gang list, right? Well, we got another lawsuit happening in Wichita, Kansas. You know what? Ain't that where Dorothy was from? You know, when that uh, tornado and stuff uh, was spitting around and took her to eyes? Personally, I think Dorothy was doing acid. Don't ask me why. I just think, you know what, and I can probably prove this, that Dorothy was doing acid. How the hell do you go from black and gray in a tornado to all color? And you're going around. You know what? I think she had an affair with a munchkin, too. I really do. I think she had an affair with a munchkin. Hey, I'm, I'm not, you know what, I'm trying to be politically correct here. Little people, midgets, what, a, what do you guys like being called? Do you like being called midgets or little people? You know, I, I think China Dow used to watch something on, what was that, TLC or something like that. And it was little people. But who, who knows, man? I still think she was freaking on acid. She dropped a couple. You know, how the hell are you going to have a scarecrow and a tin man and a lion talk? Uh, that's the only thing you get on some good acid. But anyway, uh, there is an unconstitutional discrimination this lawsuit is claiming uh, against this gang list. And uh, I always tell you guys, uh, go watch uh, Popeye and OG, man. They're really on top of this kind of stuff down in Texas about this gang list and I think uh, you know what I actually gotta go after I'm done with this and check that out their uh, YouTube channel and see how everything went at that hearing it would be beautiful to see uh, them stick it in the uh, you know the ass of law enforcement uh, plus yay plus man did you guys hear uh, I'm gonna continue this I'll bring that up in a minute uh, about 3,000 on Wichita gang list, the lawsuit claims it's unconstitutional. I think it is. Because most of the time, you don't even know you're on the damn thing. You don't. You get pulled over, or you try crossing the border in Canada to try to get you some snow cones or something, because they got a, you know, they got no short supply of snow up there. So you want to go up there get a snow cone or something, and they don't let you over the border. That right there pisses me off. Trust me, man. I loved going to Windsor, Canada. I love playing the casino over there. You know, you had some good ladies. All of a sudden, then, you know, a few years later, go screw yourself. You can't come in. You know what, you pricks? Anyway, a uh, secretive police list of alleged gang members and associates is unconstitutional. Frequently abused and unfairly targets African American and Hispanic residents. Hey, what about bikers? You know what, you guys need to reach out to the biker community, okay? There's a lot of us on there. Uh, quote, I think that an important thing to note here is that there's uh, 3,000 people listed on this gang list. And this was with the ACLU. Oh, somebody get a hold of Sharon Brett, the legal director of Kansas. Maybe she can point us to somebody down in Texas or wherever else this is playing itself out. Maybe we can do that. Uh, some as young as 12 are on that. Uh, there's even a number of individuals who remain on the gang list. Even if they're deceased. Ouch. That's kind of like, you know, Chicago, where when you die, you're guaranteed to vote Democrat. Uh, no one uh, know if they're on it or if they're associating with someone who is, which can get them put on it. Very true. You know what? They're on target right now. They're on target with this. Oh, I didn't even see this. Let's see. About 3,000 on Wichita gang list. Oh, I can't even listen to that, man. That's terrible. Anyway, I was going to do that play the article thing, but no, nah, not with me. Uh, the federal court suit filed by the ACLU in the Kansas Appleseed Center for Law and Justice seeks two outcomes. Abolishing the Wichita list and declaration that the state law authorizing it is unconstitution. So no other agencies could follow their lead. Hey, throw me in there. I back this, man. I believe it is unconstitutional. I believe it's against your First Amendment rights, the freedom of association. Uh, I also believe 
that uh, you know ban on colors and stuff that's against your First Amendment right uh, to free speech you know it's always funny they bring up the First Amendment and they try to take away a little bit of that stuff but when it comes to campaign finance it's a you know it's a form of free speech yeah uh huh you jackasses anyway it's like saying somebody's a criminal without having to try them or even accuse them of a crime so that's the real issue i think i really want to study that case where the bandito was pulled over that whole ccw thing the permit the gun where he was legal i think i'm gonna cover that one next week too man uh by the way you know i do know i've been getting a lot of emails on that info at insane throttle biker news.com i'm trying to get to the cases guys okay i can only do so much in a week and i only do it for 30 minutes for the first segment and then i go into the other part of the show so give me some breaks man get off my nuts anyway uh and due process this is very very important to bring out i don't know if you guys understand what due process is but it's very important here in the united states now you got weird laws all over this country you know, I'm talking about Canada, Australia, uh, UK, Europe, all that kind of crap. You guys are weird. I don't even know why. You know what? Canada, I love Canada. I love my Canadian brethren. And the reason why I love my Canadian brethren is they love hockey. I'm a huge hockey fan. So we got something in common. But me and, you know, I love my Englishmen because of, you know, dibs and the win and stuff. But you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. What's up with that, man? You guys are just like Dorothy and dropped acid. What did you make? A, you're, you're all, you're, everywhere in the world, everybody drives on the right side of the road. You guys drive on the left. What is wrong with you people? You know, I, I'd, I'd screw something up. If I ever had a drive in England or London or whatever the hell you want to call it, I'd be screwed blued, okay? I would. I'd be screwed because I'd be killing people. I'd be killing myself. I wouldn't know what to do here, man. Uh, but it always seems like you guys are weird, man. Anyway, uh, what are we at here? Uh, it's vague and expansive. We agree with that. Oh, guys, please get a hold of these people. Uh, let's see here. 60% uh, of the people on the gang list are African American, 25 Hispanic, and only 6% are white. You know what? They're probably all freaking clubs, too. You, <laughs> That's probably what it is. Oh, wait a second. Oh, here it is. Oh, I got it. WPD officers include on the game list a small number of certain biker groups, biker groups, and white supremacists. Everybody's a white supremacist if you're white. Comprise mainly of white individuals, but do not make the same efforts to surveil those individuals. You're on crack, okay? Put down your crack pipe. Do you know how much profiling is involved with this gang list? Now you got my freaking pecker heart here and pissed off. You're going to try to tell me that they do not make the same efforts against clubs as they do these other groups? Are you cr you're kidding me? Maybe you guys don't know what's going on in this country. Maybe you might want to look in Texas or something, you pricks. Tell me that they don't enforce it. Every time you get a, you're going to pull over in a patch. The profile. Can I see your tattoos? I need to document your tattoos. If you don't do them here, we're going to have to take you down to the station. Yeah, that's what they do. Mm, idiots. You know what? You guys were doing so good until you went that route. You know, why is it you find a decent article and next thing you know, it all goes to hell because they got to play this race card stuff. They don't enforce it or surveil them individuals. What are you kidding me? The people I know have, you know what? The feds have more pictures of them than they do in their own photo albums. And you're going to sit there and tell me. Or you're going to go to a party. And there's the little busybodies. They're over there writing down license plates. Walking around like they're Inspector Gadget or something. You're going to tell me that they don't do that. Man, come on. Ugh.
And I guess the list started in uh, the 1980s. But you know what? I'm not going to pay attention to you anymore because I'm going to change the freaking subject with you guys. Because now you got Hollywood pissed off saying, well, they don't uh, surveil them or they don't do this or they don't do that. You know what? You're just playing out of your freaking mind if you believe that, man. You know, oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, you know what? I think there's a lack of communication, and Rat's going to tell you about it, and I'll be right back. Uh, I got to take a chill pill. Yeah, what they said, man. F you. <laughs> man, I cannot believe that last article. It got my freaking blood boiling, man. You guys are a bunch of schlucks whenever you think you got something good. Anyway, here is what Trip Machine Company says you need to do. Well, wait, wait a second here. Wait a second. Oh, to be a biker. Wow, man, there are so many different type of news sources out there to tell you just how you should act and how you should dress and what it means to be a biker. Quote, we ride not to escape life. But for life not to escape us. Now that was gay. Okay. You know what? Okay. That's not PC. But I, that was, that was kind of gay. Okay. That is about as gay as Rubik's wearing a dress. Uh, who came up with something like that? Anyway. <laughs> now the first thing here says the only way you know you love someone is when you love them as much as your machine. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god, it's a so stupid already. This is as worse as freaking uh, old Wizard and his crew over at iCars.com. You know what? You got a good company name, Trip Machine Company, because you guys are tripping, man. You really are. Has this nice little picture of the guy hugging and kissing his girly friend. Oh, my goodness, much as your machine. <laughs> oh, let's hear what Valentino Rossi has to say. The most important thing is to have a good relationship with the bike. You have to understand what she wants. I think of a motorcycle as a woman, and I know that sounds silly, but it's true. <laughs> Ask China Dow about how I feel about that motorcycle. Better yet, ask China Dow how much I really love my truck. You know, she got on punishment for what was it? Uh, about six months because she threw a shovel at my freaking truck. You imagine what I would have done to her if she would have done that to my bike? Are you shitting me? I actually put on a, what was it? It had to be. A, uh, a little video of a broad in Sturgis jumped over the bike and kicked his bike. I'd have punched her right in the mouth. She wouldn't have lived. Anyway. <laughs> you never ask someone to let you ride his or her bike. Okay, he's, he, I got something to disagree. I, I disagree here. No, another man is not supposed to ride your bike. You don't let him near that. Everybody knows you're going to get punched in the mouth for that. But when it comes to the lady, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm of the old school, okay? When I started out, women were on the back. I'm still trying, women. I'm still trying to come up to date, but, you know, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Uh, the word brotherhood means more to you than just a bunch of riders getting together and having fun on the weekends. I wonder if the Finks would be happy that they're being used in an article like this because under brother the word brotherhood means more to you than just a bunch of writers they got your picture there how fun is that one <laughs> uh you recognize your friends by the sounds of their exhaust okay somebody stole a meme somebody stole it you know i love how these caps they caption it too you are walking down a busy street when you hear a motorcycle near Bye, and you recognize it as your friend. They got to get all dramatic and stuff like that. Uh, you find yourself living between road trips. Hmm. See, I, you're dumb. Okay, who writes this shit? Hold on, let, let me see who wrote this stuff right here. Uh, it doesn't even say who wrote it, man. Gay. 
Uh, let's see here. Your conventional topics usually entail words like horsepower and piston rings. No, actually, uh, it has to deal with, you know, if you ever listen to me, it deals with Punteng, uh, Pink Taco, uh, the Anti-Vipers League, uh, Women Are Vipers, they use mind tricks on you. That's kind of my conversation, man. Just so you know, you know, I did have that dude that was really upset that uh, he thinks that I'm picking on China Doll all the time. I talked about that uh, on our show this morning. Uh, let's see here. When freedom to you is synonymous with open roads and two wheels. Okay, how gay again. Uh, you find yourself writing just for the sake of writing. And here you got a picture of a bunch of cops riding a motorcycle. You're not doing too good for us. Okay? You know, one of these days, I gotta, you know what? When I get time, I'm gonna start writing some rebuttal articles. I'm gonna do uh, right here the 10 signs you are reliving the biker lifestyle. That's what I gotta do. Uh, you choose your bike over every other medium of transportation when possible, convenient or otherwise. You know what? When I was younger, maybe. But now when it snows, screw you, man. I'm taking my truck. You know, if it's under freaking 60 degrees, go screw yourself, man. My knees are killing me. Uh, anyway, then it talks about all the freaking gear ratios and crap like that. They want to sound like they're doing something good, I guess. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? I don't know about that too good. Uh, so, anyway, that is the show for tonight. Make sure you guys have a great night, man. I really appreciate you guys spending time with me. Uh, you guys rock and roll, man. We're uh, again the books and everything. You guys are just phenomenal, man. Uh, really appreciate all that support. I really appreciate all the donations that you gave us uh, this week over on uh, Super Chat as well as PayPal. Got a lot coming in on the Cash App. If you want to use our Cash App, do it directly. It's Dollar Sign Motorcycle Madhouse. You rock and roll, man. I really appreciate everything, guys. I'll talk to you later. Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't give the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happened. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic. Nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal. Get your copy now over on Amazon and all online book retailers, man. You guys be safe out there.